The approach to 2050, cops and robbers isn't what it used to be. With technology, there's no dark. There's cameras everywhere. New gadgets are giving police extrasensory perception. We wanted to bring 2050 into the year 2015. And true or false, can your brain show when you're lying? Will these brain scans be used by governments to simply solve all crimes? The future of crime fighting in this week's edition of Exploration Earth 2050. Hi, I'm Joe Pennant and welcome to Earth 2050. This week we're going to take a look at how technology is being used to fight something that's just about as old as human existence. Crime. As we get closer to 2050, police and entrepreneurs are coming together to create some high-tech devices that are revolutionizing law enforcement. We're trying to solve a problem. So crime just in the U.S. is a trillion dollar negative economic impact. In the year 2050, you'll see an entire portfolio of products keep people safe and better improve society. But, as always, when it comes down to issues of crime and how it's enforced, there are tough questions. Like how much power law enforcement should really have, especially if future technology gives them even more. By 2050, one of the interesting things is there'll be so much monitoring going on, it'll be very, very difficult to do something that is illegal without getting caught. In fact, there's plenty of monitoring going on right now. In the last decade, cameras have turned up all over the place. And not just the ones that we carry around in our smartphones. They're at traffic lights, at ATMs, at the corner store. Did you know that the average person has his or her photograph taken almost 30 times a day? Crime is already going down in part because of cameras that have spread through our cities. The question becomes, who controls the cameras? If it's all one corporation, if it's all one government, even if they start out being very protective, yes, we're taking care of you, we're sincere civil servants, eventually the end result is Big Brother. But surveillance cameras are just a tiny part of the revolution that's taking place in law enforcement. Computerized fingerprint databases, facial recognition systems, and perhaps most importantly, DNA. They have solved thousands of crimes and freed hundreds of people who've been wrongly convicted. We're getting better and better at decoding genome. It took billions of dollars to get the first human genome decoded, and now it's under $1,000. At some point, it will happen in a few minutes in a device you have in your pocket. Well, what does that mean? The answer is that there's plenty of speculation, but that no one really knows. How will it affect us in the future? I think it's going to, it's going to have to make us as a society think a lot more about ourselves. And when it comes to crime, there's more to think about all the time. For one, a lot of the technology being used by police to solve crimes is also available to the bad guys. So it comes down to technology will help us prevent crime because we have so many ways of detecting things. But at the same time, there's an arms race. You know, uh, someone knows that something is gonna be detected, so they try to hide the crime. The future of crime fighting is complex and always changing. Do we want to scan people's brains to see if they're telling the truth? If the government has the right to simply grab you off the street, put you in a PET scanner and say, have you done anything bad lately? Yeah, sure, crime will go away. <laughs> I'm not sure we want to live in that kind of a society. These days, robots are working on the International Space Station. There are robots exploring the inside of the human body. But soon, they could be doing something a lot closer to home, like working the police beat in your neighborhood. Some people are uncomfortable with the idea of this because they have seen a lot of science fiction, or they have an idea that a robot is something that could be uh, dangerous and have a mind of its own. What was once science fiction is quickly becoming reality. And though crime may not seem to affect us all, the devices used to fight crime and methods used to prevent it are quickly becoming part of our everyday lives. Technology changes daily, if not by the hour. Uh, who's to say where this could be in, in a month from now? Coming up on Earth 2050, meet your company's new security guard. It's five foot tall, 300 pounds, and can see, feel, hear, and smell.
Hi, I'm Joe Pena and welcome back to Earth 2050. I'm in Silicon Valley on my way to meet with a company that's developed a piece of technology, a robot that they say will revolutionize crime fighting. How? By stopping crimes before they happen. It's called the K5 Autonomous Data Machine. A big name for what its developers say is the world's first robotic security guard. We wanted to bring 2050 into the year 2015. We wanted to take all those, those imaginative, creative things that we, we saw as children in Star Trek, Star Wars, and the Jetsons, and we wanted to make them happen today because, frankly, we don't see them happening fast enough. Dubbed the Night Watchman on Wheels, the K5 was first shown to the public in 2013. It's five foot tall, 300 pounds, and can see, feel, hear, and smell. And according to its developers, the K5 can do some of those things a lot better than a human being. The Nightscope K5 is a better security guard because it can do things that nobody can do. You can put more sensors on it, you can collect the data over a longer period of time, and the recall is, is instant. It's not something that you're having to rely on memory or witness accounts or anything like that. You're actually getting the data. It has four cameras, giving it a 360-degree field of vision, all in high definition. Embedded microphones allow it to hear and record all the sounds around it. It's always looking for any kind of nefarious or uh, abnormal behavior. And then once it detects something, it'll send an alert to a security operations center or a dispatcher so that somebody can actually look at that data and determine do they need to deploy human resources. <laughs> How does it know where to go? How does it not bump into things? Uh, so there's numerous different sensors on board that help it determine its location. It's incredible. It, it knows exactly where to go and it doesn't bump into anything. And it's completely random. You want it to be random so that you don't have somebody there watching their watch going, oh, hey, it's going to be coming back in five minutes. It's always rolling. Those sensors and a group of onboard computers allow the K5 to do things that a human security guard could only dream of. It's got an onboard GPS system. It even has a computer recognition system that scans every face it sees, and a lot more. What else is on it? Uh, as it spins around, you'll see here on the side, right here on the side, we have license plate recognition cameras. Uh, so the license plate recognition cameras will ca capture license plates. And that system is capable of processing 300 of those plates every minute. All the information is connected to the national law enforcement databases. So if the police are on the lookout for a fugitive or a stolen car, the K5 can make the identification. One of the breakthrough technologies we're developing is the, what we call the Nightscope Security Operations Center. The key here is, in order to predict and prevent crime, you really want real-time on-site data. And what we develop is a browser-based tool for security professionals and ourselves to be able to see exactly what the machine is seeing live. We're first looking at corporate campuses, we're looking at private security companies, and then we were going to move into uh, the public domain. So in neighborhoods, into law enforcement, into uh, anything where uh, parks, events, anything where you're going to have a gathering of people where you want to reduce crime. The machine knows when it needs to be recharged, so it will return itself to the charging station before it runs out of power. That means that it's on the job 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This robot is designed to be approachable. There are no guns, there are no tasers. It's strictly for collecting data, so it's safe for humans. The K5 is designed to be deployed on corporate campuses and at schools of all levels, from grade schools to colleges. If someone tries to disable it, it sends a message to headquarters. And if a person, say they're walking home alone, late at night, feels threatened, an onboard phone hooks them up directly to the police. They can hit the push to talk button and it'll immediately call up a dispatcher and somebody to talk to. Critics say this robot could cost the jobs of at least some of the more than one million people employed as security guards. The developers say that there's nothing to fear because people still have to process the data. Do you think that a robot is better than a security guard, better than a human? The most powerful combination is to have the machines do the monotonous, dangerous, and computational heavy work and have the humans do the strategic work. Developers say that by 2050, the mechanical beat cop could be a regular feature of our lives. 
What's holding you back right now? What kind of technological advances do you want to see in the next 30 years? The only thing holding us back is I need a 48-hour clock. <laughs> There's just not enough time in the day to do everything that we need to do. Coming up on Exploration Earth 2050, is there a threat behind that door? This device will tell you. So it's all about low-cost, simple solutions um, that really bring robotics to the masses. Soldiers and police have a lot in common. Every day they have to be prepared to deal with violent and potentially life-threatening situations. When that happens, they need to have as much information as they can get, and as fast as they can get it. If you're in a SWAT team and someone's taken a hostage in a building, you want to be able to see what's going on around that building. Does somebody escape through the back door? Where are your guys? Law enforcement and the military have a term for this kind of knowledge. It's called situational awareness, and it's a major priority in all their operations. Situational awareness is having the maximum amount of information about the situation at you at the point of entry. So as soon as you walk into the room, you know immediately where the exits are, you know where your co colleagues are. A good example of the kind of technology being used by law enforcement is this drone called the Cube. It gives police an airborne perspective on danger does it faster than anything they've used before. It's designed to be really, really easy and quick to deploy in the field because you want to get situational awareness as quickly as possible. It's much better to put a cube into that situation than to send people into that situation when it might be dangerous. Cube is just one of a series of products being developed by entrepreneurs seeking to give policemen a high-tech edge over criminals. I'm at a place called Bounce Imaging at Harvard University. They've invented a new piece of technology that's designed to keep police officers and all of us safe in potentially dangerous situations. And it's something that law enforcement has never quite seen before. Let's take a look. It's called the Bounce Imaging Explorer. It's the size of a softball and doesn't weigh much more. And just like a softball, it's designed to be thrown. But this isn't a game. The Explorer is tossed directly into potentially dangerous situations. So it gets there before police put themselves in harm's way. I'm a police officer. I throw this into a room and what happens next? As it's flying through the air, it, take, it flashes and it takes images every half second. The pictures, from six wide-angle cameras, give police an instant 360-degree view of the room. The ball keeps taking pictures as it rolls around, and they're all beamed back to a smartphone or a handheld device. The data from the room is almost instantaneous. It takes about a second to pipe it out and about a half second to stitch it into the image you can see. It's got microphones, and it can be equipped with sensors to detect poisonous or flammable gases. For police, for soldiers, and emergency workers, the Bounce Imager is a game changer. What kind of situations would you throw one of these in? Uh, anytime we are in a hostile environment, and there's an unknown, possibly a suspect around a corner, uh, down a stairway, up a stairway. Can someone just pick it up and throw it out of the room? Well, so any, anything that you introduce into a room, whether it be a robot or a drone, could get swatted out of the air. But this is moving pretty fast. It's going through, and it's taking images as it goes. So even if they were to throw it out of the room, it already has the data that it needs to send back. And it's called the bounce imager for a reason. The ball has a hard rubber impact resistance shell. What I like about this is right off the bat, you can anticipate losing it, but you don't want to be throwing away $10,000 bills at every whack either. You know, I, I have, I'm accountable to the taxpayers. It's all about low cost, simple solutions um, that really bring robotics to the masses. Right now, a fully outfitted bounce imager costs about $1,000. Developers say it should be in the hands of police departments around the world within the next few years. A piece of low-cost, high-tech that will soon be saving lives. We're effectively getting rid of that uh, scene in a horror movie where they're about to open the door or go around the corner. Just throw one of these instead. That's right. You can, always, you can always be aware of what lies ahead. Um, and I think it's going to improve safety. I think it's going to improve uh, our awareness. And it's going to allow a lot of interesting things. Coming up on Earth 2050, this is your brain on the truth. This is your brain on lies. When someone's brain is lying, basically they're using a lot of their brain to communicate that lie.
Welcome back to Earth 2050. Detectives, prosecutors, judges, and juries often say a criminal investigation is ultimately a search for the truth. They say the bottom line is trying to separate fact from fiction. You know, we want to get to the truth. We want to understand who's telling the truth. It sounds simple, but it really isn't. Because criminals are in the business of trying to hide the truth. Over the years, law enforcement has developed an arsenal of tools to separate the guilty from the innocent. Forensic science, from fingerprints to scanning electron microscopes to DNA, is making it harder to get away with crime. But it still happens every day, everywhere, and in some new places. So as we all know, the digital world is a realm of crime. People can be robbed by a few keystrokes on a keyboard in Belarus, and they're robbed in Kansas. For many years, the key piece of technology in law enforcement's search for truth has been the polygraph, the lie detector. First unveiled in the 1960s, it works on the belief that if someone is lying, their body will react in ways that show they're lying. It's really, really difficult for people to lie. When someone's brain is lying, basically they're using a lot of their brain to communicate that lie. It's really, really difficult for people to lie. In fact, you know, kids don't do it until they're eight, of the age of about three or four. And of course, as we get older, you know, we do get better at that. The polygraph works by charting a person's reactions as they're asked a series of questions. Heart rate can increase while lying. Blood pressure will go up. Some people get short of breath. But there's only one problem. This doesn't happen with everyone. People have been trained to be polygraphs. We have a number of people in our government who are trained to be polygraphs. We have all agencies devoted to training people on how to be polygraphs. And that's the main reason that polygraphs can't be used in courtrooms. There's no way to say for sure whether someone is lying. Well, some say that a piece of medical technology could change that. This is not a technology that people can beat. But the question is, with brain scanning and some of these other techniques, are we on the verge of getting the real lie detector? They're talking about a brain scan lie detector. It uses magnetic resonance imaging, MRIs, a common healthcare device. It's sort of like an x-ray machine that takes multiple real-time images of parts of the body, including the brain. And you can think about it like a movie. And so what we do is we get a movie of that person's brain while they're performing specific tasks, and then we look at whether or not there's brain activity when they're doing some tasks versus when they're doing other tasks. To see if someone's lying, the task is to get them to answer a series of questions, almost like they do with a polygraph. The difference is that with the brain scan line detectors, you can see the brain react when the person is lying. Here's an image of the brain when someone is telling the truth. It's virtually clear. What happens when a person's telling the truth? What do you see? When a person's telling the truth, we don't get, we, we have very little brain activity. It's really where we spend most of our state. When someone is lying, blood rushes to the key areas of the brain, and this is picked up by the brain scan. You just see a tremendous amount of their brain activity that they're using. Um, you see a lot of these red spots all over the brain, and those all indicate parts of the brain that the person's using when they're being deceptive. So every single pixel here, basically, is millions of neurons that are working all together, trying to concoct that line. Yes. So, if the brain scan lie detector is foolproof, why isn't it being used in courtrooms around the world? Well, skeptics say that giving police access to our brains is a slippery slope. Will these brain scans be used to simply solve all crimes? Already, brain scan technology, much cheaper than MRIs and much smaller, is available for consumers. I tried this simple headset during a trip to Silicon Valley. It's not nearly as powerful as MRI technology, but in a few years, it could be. Imagine a lie detector not only at the police station, but at your office or your home. What would be the effects if you can tell when that politician is lying, when that public official is lying, when your boss is lying? Police say that in a criminal investigation, speed is vital. For them, a brain scan lie detector can quickly eliminate suspects and put them on the trail of the bad guy a lot faster. We know that we can absolutely do a better job of finding innocent people innocent, and we can find a better job of finding guilty people guilty. This is the technology that can do it. Hi, I'm Joe Pena, and welcome back to Earth 2050. Almost everyone in law enforcement agrees that with new crime-fighting devices, 
going to get harder to get away with crime than ever before. Crime has always been based on the notion that the criminal thinks he or she can get away with it. Well, there are several ways to get away with it. One is to have a corrupt society and to be, you know, one of the people in charge or to bribe somebody in charge. But the other way is to make sure that nobody sees you. Well, that, that, that mode is going away. Well, if you look at our planet's global growth population, we're gonna go from seven billion people to nine billion people. And the law enforcement apparatus that exists globally just won't scale. We need new tools, we need new capabilities, and you just can't keep adding officers and guards and adding population and guards. We just literally can't afford it. But criminals are always looking for an edge. And the same technology that's helping police might also be useful to the people on the other side of the law. The good news is that better crime-fighting tools are saving the falsely accused from going to jail or worse. Technology will make it easier and easier to free those people. DNA analysis has freed hundreds and hundreds of people, some of them from death row, that they were going to be killed and we were able to prove their innocence. Technology will do that even more. So the whole purpose of this is to make it low cost and accessible to the kinds of users that, that really need it so that the frontline police officer can afford it. Um, current robotic systems are in the tens of thousands of dollars, um, and so they're only accessible to big city SWAT teams and some specialized units in the military. We're trying to make this available to every police officer in America. As far-fetched as it might have seemed just a decade ago, robot security guards flying cameras and foolproof flight detectors will be taken a bite out of crime sooner rather than later. For now, I'm Joe Penham, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on Earth 2050.